might mildly regret my decision. Welcome to the White Sands National Park. Okay, so I just entered White Sands National Park and I don't really got any thoughts so far. I did just make a quick stop at the visitor center and wow, was it busy. So I got out of there as fast as I could. I'm gonna drive to the end and then I'm gonna make my way back. Okay. There's a lot of bumps while driving on sand. And my god, like I'm squinting because that's how bright it is. And I just I left my sunglasses just on the counter in the back and I'm just too lazy to grab them. But like my god, it hurts. I haven't even got out of my van yet and I'm already blown away. I only have about five hours before the park closes, so I hope to make the most of it. I'm currently on the Alkali Flats Trail. It's a five mile or eight kilometer round trip if you follow the markers, but We'll see if I do that. So I'm gonna follow the markers until I see something else I wanna see and just walk in that direction. I feel pretty confident I'll be able to find my way back. I'm gonna laugh so hard if I'm the one that gets lost. This place is something else, really. So a little bit of history of the place. Basically, you know, back, not when dinosaurs roamed the earth, but just after when dinosaurs roamed the earth, there was a, an ocean here, and then the ocean dried up, leaving giant gypsum mineral deposits. And then the mountains rose, and then as uh, the last ice age was ending and all the ice was melting, the water then turned the gypsum into sand. And here it is today. The only reason why the sand dunes are still here today and haven't been blown away is because there is a water table basically right underneath this entire all these sand dunes, which is giving it enough stickiness to hold them here. So that's basically the gist that I got from the little info boards that I was reading. Hopefully I relate it in some sort of accurate, understandable way. <laughs> My dudes. I'm going to get sand everywhere. I'm also notorious for literally shoveling sand into my shoes while I'm walking. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. I swear to God that this desert dehydrates you through your skin. Like, I swear to God, like, just being here is like sucking the moisture out of your skin because I was fully hydrated. I had extra bottles of water. I've been out here like an hour and now I'm down to my last one. So yeah, bring lots of water, no matter what time of year it is. Bring sunscreen, no matter what time of year it is because your girl's gonna be burnt by the time I get back to the van and uh, extra camera batteries because I only had one and it's almost dead, so I have to go back to the van and charge it now. <laughs> I might mildly regret my decision. Oh god, ew. I 100% have sand in my shoes now. Ugh. I think I'm gonna rock it barefoot the rest of the way. Let's see the damage. Oh. oh. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Oh. Again, it's not as bad as I thought. I'm, it's not bad at all. I'm gonna have sand in my bed for days after this. I know, just know it. That's gonna suck. Do I recommend ankle gaiters? Absolutely. Do I own ankle gaiters? No, I don't. And uh, you know, that's why my shoes are full of sands because I don't own ankle gaiters. 
And the reason I don't is because I would rather spend that $70 on, I don't know, a tank of gas, a nice stay at a hot springs, a dinner out with somebody. Just saying. I'm going to wait until I find a pair for $5 at the thrift shop, which, you know, I'm sure I can, so. It's getting muy cold, so I am going to stay here for maybe 10 more minutes and then I'm leaving. My officers are not responsible for anything that happens during this lockout. Do you agree to that? Yes, sir. And then you're filming. So I didn't get much more footage of any other place in the White Sands because as I was packing my backpack and my camera back into the van, someone comes up to me and goes, hey, do you have any tools to like get into locked vehicles? And I was like, actually, I don't. Like, you know, as a van life person that's driving to Mongolia, you think she would? But I don't, I don't. Getting cold out and one of the party members from that group was just in a dress and she had no jacket and I was like, she is going to freeze. And I know a ranger's gonna be by trying to kick everybody out soon, but I also know like she's going to freeze by that point. So I offer him like, hey, I'll drive you guys to the visitor center. We can ask for help or at least at least by the visitor center, you'll have service. So if you have to call AAA, you can call AAA type thing. So I get the three of them into my van and we drive down to the visitor center and there ended up being a ranger up there already. So we went all the way back and then we got the rangers opened the doors for them. Come on, Paula. Is it harder to unlock than we thought? <laughs> oh, oh, so close. Yeah. Yay! Insurance and then your license. That way I didn't break into somebody else's vehicle. And then whose van? My van. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, you guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck with the wedding. Good luck with your PhD. And it was a pleasure to meet you guys. See you. Seven nights. Go back to waving at other van people. I got two waves so far in this park alone. So. Oh, I would like to know the statistics. Just like how many people get lost in the sand dunes each year. It's actually really cool. <laughs> kind of nice because I was really hot there, but it's really cool.